I feel like we need some sort of dramatic music playing. Does this place look familiar? It's Oak Alley Plantation. This was Louis's house from Interview with a Vampire before he got turned. Oak Alley Plantation is an old plantation about an hour away from New Orleans. This is probably one of the most well-known filming locations from the movie Interview with the Vampire. Right now we're walking up the actual Oak Alley to the front of the house right on the street because that's where the movie pretty much starts. This place is absolutely beautiful. And there's Jessica looking beautiful herself and spooky. You're so, like, proud. These trees are massive. Basically, if you don't know the history of Oak Alley, Oak Alley was a sugar cane plantation. Look at this place. I like how the branches touch the ground. They're so heavy and they just stay there. All of them do that. Like over there? Yeah, but these big ones to your left. You know what they kind of remind me of? Mind Flare from Stranger Things. Yeah, I can see that. The trees here at Oak Alley. Look how monstrous they look. That's probably some of the oldest uh, horror-themed spooky tales that people told to each other was the trees have come to life, the dark forest. I mean, looking at trees like this, how stunning they are, but spooky, especially at night. I can see how that would uh, play on one's mind in the early ages of time. In one of the opening shots of the movie, Brad Pitt can be seen riding a horse right down that hillside, down this path, which wasn't brick at the time. Instead, it was dirt. And he made his way right down to his home, which is Oak Alley, at the very end of this. It's a long walk. But that's it. This was his home before he turned into a vampire. The thing that I always kind of giggled about with that scene is like, Louis is the moody one, you know? And that's like his first real moody monologue is, uh, how does it go? I was a young man at that age, 25, younger than you are now, owner of a large plantation, something something blah blah blah, my wife died in childbirth, blah blah blah. As we get closer, you can see a lot of the similarities between how the house is today and how it looked back when they were filming Interview with a Vampire here. It's identical. In the movie, the slave mob, after realizing that Louis is a vampire, they come right across the lawn this way to the front of the house in search of the monster. So the scene happens right here, exactly right here in this doorway, where the mob is fed up about being preyed upon by their loved ones, and they're coming for Louis, played by Brad Pitt. And at that same moment, he's carrying Thandie Newton out because he's just given in to his blood loss, and he's accidentally killed her, and he's remorseful, and he says, get out, this house is cursed, you are all free men. And then sets fire to the house. Boom, fire. Louis busts open the door, and he comes out carrying his slave that he bit, but this looks identical behind him. You can see the staircase and the chandelier. They're still here. This is the shot. Disgusted with who he's become, Louis grabs a torch and starts running through the house, setting the house on fire. And here's a little interesting fact. They actually did burn part of the second floor balcony right up here that they had to pay for. They don't talk about that on the tours. 
but most of the interior shots were, fil were filmed at a different plantation not too far from here. Another scene that we're gonna try to line up, and it's gonna be kinda hard because a lot has changed and landscapes change, but the night that Louis and Lestat, I keep wanting to call him Tom Cruise, the vampire, the night that they're having their party, they pick this socialite with two dogs and her servant, and they take them out behind the house into the trees for a snack. Let's mm. see if we can find where this all happened. Poodles. Poodles. That's right. That's right. They did eat the poodles. Well, well Louis ate the poodles, the poodles because yeah. he's he, he refuses to eat humans. Exactly, humans. It's like hummus. Humans. Humans. Let's see if we can find it. If you're watching the movie, it looks like they walk off that way because you can see the opposite end of this building. But from what we've heard and read online and talking to different people, they actually switched the film, which they do a lot. It's Hollywood movie magic. And in all actuality, they walked past this tree over into that open grass area. Aside from knowing that it was actually filmed here on the property, it is a little hard to line up everything. So we're gonna do the best that we can. There was a tree, we have an idea, and there are some ferns in one of the scenes. I think we got it figured out. You guys know I'm weird and I can't help myself and while we're walking along here I caught a frog and then I was like oh my god I caught a frog and I was like you know what at one point Lestat lives off of frogs in the uh, the swamp after they slit his throat. You want to see my frog? Yeah wait are you gonna eat it? No! Don't but eat it. Hello! Hello frog. Hello. I am Monsieur Frog. It's a vampire frog. He's a vamp vampire. And also, what is your favorite Disney movie? Please don't jump in my face. <gasps> Princess and the Frog. Don't kiss it. I don't want to kiss it. Don't kiss it. It'll That's scare a... him. He's a baby. You yeah. don't kiss a baby. No. If anything, he's a vampire frog and he's going to bite vampire. your neck. Okay, I let him go now. All right. Oh, okay. he hopped. Bye. He's gone. Bye-bye, Monsieur Isn't frog. that house beautiful? Oh, yeah. I guess it was over here. All right, so from watching the movie, we think we figured it out that this is where Louis was sitting with that socialite and the two dogs. He was going to have some cougar love, but it didn't, but it, he ended up eating the dogs and the woman started screaming. I think this could be it because there's some ferns in that um, shot. There are ferns in that shot, you're right. There's some ferns right there. Yeah. And the house, if you look right around this, this tree, there's a corner of the house from the scene that you see for a blip at the second. And uh, this is where the lady aunt starts screaming, Oh no, my little papillon! You killed him! And then Lestat runs over because she's freaking out and snaps her neck. And they get into a tussle. So Brad Pitt, as a vampire, could have been sitting right there eating puppies. Jessica's got her vampire flair. There you go. It's like my cloak. Blah, 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 blah. blah, blah. I don't say that, blah, blah, blah. All right, so it looks like we found another scene, which is basically right where we were just talking about, about Brad Pitt sitting there eating puppies. But do you see that tree that's off in the distance to the right of your screen? Look familiar? So this scene is kind of hard to tell. Um, we think it was filmed here. Could have been in a studio because it's where uh, Louis and Lestat get into a bit of a tussle. Uh, Lestat picks on Louis for eating the dog that had just happened. And uh, Louis picks him up with his newfound strength and rushes him up against a tree. You know, and it's kind of memorable because he kind of looks like he runs for a while and then slams him up against a tree. It looks like that tree right back there. But of course, Brad Pitt. Um, Both of these trees, that one there. Yeah, kind of goes well, back and forth. Uh, Tom Cruise is on, a, or his double is, is on a pulley system. So. Who knows if it was on here or if it was on in a studio, but it looks just like that tree. You know, it wouldn't surprise me actually because Tom Cruise is noted or you know known for doing his own stunts if he actually did it. Him laughing in that, he was probably having a lot of fun. Tom Cruise, if you're watching this, was that really you? Come to me, come to me, look into my gaze and come to me. Our search for more interview with the vampire filming locations brings us to the Gallier House, further up Royale Street. Look at this place. 
do want to note that this place is one of the many homes here that is on the National Historic Landmark. And it's a very beautiful place. And just look back here. You'll find that this house is referenced a lot online, and there's a lot of confusion, a lot of mystery, but one thing I think we do know for sure is that this is the house Anne Rice modeled Rue Royale after in the novel Interview with the Vampire, but I do not believe that any of the film pieces were filmed at this location. After the piano recital scene, Lestan asks Claudia to play something on a more somber note, and then they showed this building with people carrying caskets out of the top floor and the bottom. So right now I'm standing in front of one of the doors where the caskets were being carried out of in the funeral scene and it looked like a family of four. Um, in the scene you hear Louis say, an infant prodigy with a lust for killing that matched his own. Together they finished off whole families, which they are carrying out a family from this house. I can't believe I'm standing in front of this church. We're about to go up to all the craziness that's in front of it because a scene from Interview with a Vampire was filmed right there. Right now we're standing in Jackson Square. It's very loud, but in this scene, Claudia can be seen sitting exactly where Jessica is. And over here in this doorway is Lestat watching. you've been a very naughty little girl, they set him on fire. And they run out of their house to catch the, uh, the boat to Paris without any bags or anything. And they run out of this door right behind me. This is almost the exact shot of them running out of this house. And if you look very, very closely above those doors, you can see those bars. Let's get in a little closer here. I'm a little sad about this, but this building right here at one point used to be a doll store. It's the same store where Claudia, in Interview with a Vampire, bought her doll and killed the toy maker. One of the ending scenes from the movie Interview with a Vampire happened right here at this house. It's looking decrepit. It's looking like a vampire lives here. But in order to go check out the filming location, we have to go in the back. So to go just in a little bit detail about the scene, there goes my hat. Uh, it's a beautiful windy day, feels good. Um, Louis says he smells death, and I think he says it smells familiar. I'm not really sure, I don't remember. But he basically finds Lestat still not having fully recovered from what they did to him hundreds of years ago. And he's been in solitude. He's gone a little crazy. He hasn't modernized himself, so he doesn't even know what artificial light is, you know. And now Louis feels sad for him. Um, Lestat begs him to stay. He still needs a companion. And Louis is like, uh uh, I ain't doing that again. <laughs> and he leaves and he goes about his life. I read that when they did the scene where uh, so Lestat is surprised by the helicopter light. Um, and he's like, your night has turned into day! That in order to do that scene, they had an aerial specialist in a helicopter. They shut down the gas station that's around the corner. They even took down some of the power lines here. They removed some trees. They removed some of the windows from the front of the yard, um, in front of, front of the house. And uh, once the helicopter was able to come in low enough, um, that basically was the cue for them to start a scene. Even though in the film it looks fluid completely fluid. Uh, very fascinating, you know, all that just for this maybe minute 30 scene, you know? They, they built all that, transformed this whole house and the interiors and all. Crazy. Cool. I mean, look at this place. If this doesn't scream vampires, I don't know what does. Over here, it looks like it's a wall that continues but it's like a little alcove back here right here is the driveway i kind of want to open that door and see what's on the other side maybe it's a vampire so 
So pretty much what you're looking at right now, this is bare compared to what they did here for the movie. They pretty much turned this back area into the front porch. They put on fake columns, they put on everything fake. And this is the, where Louis walks up into the house and sees Lestat. I always keep in mind when we do these things that so much time has changed, but this would have been the front door. This is Interview with a Vampire History. I'm not sure if it is the back courtyard, the front courtyard, or both, but they built these fake tree trunks that were 12 feet, and about six of them. And they used those tree trunks for filming, but they also built their scaffolding atop it to move the camera during the scene. So they really transformed this area. I think that's pretty cool. This whole back part of this, just imagine, it looking like the front of the house, only creepier and more overgrown. Right now, we're standing outside of Anne Rice's former home here in New Orleans. The house that's behind us, it's where she wrote Interview with a Vampire. I'm pretty sure that I hear crows off in the distance. I love it. It's always, it just sets the scene, I love it. But uh, I think that there's also skulls on the fence, but I need a closer look, so I'm gonna cross the street. This house is amazing. Holy crap. They look like skulls, but they're not. They really do. Wow. Especially from across the street, it looks like skulls all down the road. Right now they're doing construction on the house. But this is where Anne Rice once lived she would have walked right through that front door. At one point, that would have been Anne Rice's mailbox. And look at this tree right here, right in front of the house and the roots. It screams horror, doesn't it? And there's another one over here that kind of just bookends the house. There's a lot of construction going on in the neighborhood right now, but can you imagine living here in the neighborhood when Anne Rice was living here. For Halloween, she would often open up her doors or send out invitations to her own personal Halloween parties right there in that house. That would have been amazing. I can only imagine what it would be like to spend Halloween with Anne Rice. This house right here is now the home of actor John Goodman. But at one point, it was the house of musician Trent Reznor from Nine Inch Nails, and it was also his recording studio. I read online that John Goodman is often seen walking throughout the Garden District, walking his dog. Kinda wish he was doing that right now. But, sadly, no John Goodman in sight. But just look at this house. This gate, this fence, You can never get tired of looking at all the different houses in the architecture here. Beautiful. The bird in the background is what's really making this. Jessica, what on earth are you doing over here? What are you collecting? Flowers. Let's see them. I'm gonna put them in a little vial. They're pretty. They are very pretty. I like the color combination. I was getting in some of the, the plant bulbs. Seeds, whatever. You know, on tree. often whenever we're out filming, you're on, you disappear and then I find you collecting things, whether it's bugs or flowers or something. I appreciate nature. Yes, you do. And I like to stay at home with <laughs> She's not lying. Right now, our trunk is full of cotton, uh -huh. grave dirt, uh -huh. rocks, uh -huh. stones, now uh -huh. flowers. I'm surprised we don't have any bugs right now. This is like a usual um, for us. Do we have any bugs? I'm sure there's bugs in something. No, I don't have any bugs. Oh my god, look at those little birds. So oh, little tiny finches. Just I've never seen so many in one spot. That's awesome. But no, we don't <laughs> we don't have any we don't have any bugs right now. I didn't find any bugs. Oh no, I do. I have um not bugs, but I have a uh, an old hornet's nest that I found at an old church. 
All right, so there's two bookstores in this country that I would love to visit. It's on a bucket list. One of them sells Stephen King books that's up in Bangor, Maine, and the other one sells autographed Anne Rice books, and that's here in New Orleans. Here on the second floor of this building is the Garden District Bookshop, and they have something. Well, I heard they have something in there, so let's go inside and see if it's true. One of the main things that draws us into this bookshop are these pictures right here. You see, for the release of Memnock the Devil, Anne Rice staged her own funeral, I guess you would say. It was like a publicity moment. But these are actually pictures of it. We've heard about it. Some people said that, oh, it was a legend, it was lore, that she really didn't do it. And other people said she did. Other people said she died, but she didn't. But this is, it actually happened. How crazy cool is that? They also have this beautifully framed collage of pictures. Look at that. Tell me that's not gorgeous. There she is right there in the gown. Beautiful. Wow. And she's smiling too. That's like the best part about it is. Just see how happy she is. If you ask nicely, the folks here at the bookstore will share this photo album with you. And it says, Anne Rice signs July 12th. I'm sure she's been here many times, but this book, photo album, it's filled with some goodies. There's another shot of the funeral. If only we can go back in time to this event. That's so crazy. There's a shot of Anne Rice climbing into the coffin. That is just perfect. There's Anne Rice right there. Also in a photo that day is Stan, her husband. Very pretty. I just really love the fact that she's smiling on all these photos. Like she's having a blast. They have a display here of a lot of her books. Paperbacks, The Coffin of Terror. But if you go right around this way, you can pick up all of her books here, all of her novels. Basic, or in this case, literally, in this case, they're autographed. I would kill to buy this. This is a first edition Interview with a Vampire signed for $750. If we had it, we'd buy it, Jessica. I'm just telling you right now. It would be ours. We have one more cemetery to visit, Jessica. Well, we can't go inside. We can only look inside. But... You can see through the gate. Well, yeah, we can't see through the gate, but this cemetery has a very, very, very important piece in Anne Rice history. Oh yeah, what is it? You see, in pretty much all of Anne Rice's books, they all take place here in the Garden District. Everything here in the Garden District, which is right where she lived, used to live, are all featured in her books, including Lafayette Cemetery, number one. I kind of dig in this picture because you can see the shadow of the gate of Lafayette Cemetery number one, but let's get a little closer to here. We can't go inside because they are closed for repairs right now. But this is the cemetery that is featured so prominently in Anne Rice's books, including Interview with a Vampire. And this is also the cemetery where Anne Rice did the publicity stunt of her own funeral for Memnock the Devil. It's right through these gates that her and her casket were taken. I'm making Jessica walk all the way around Lafayette Cemetery number one, and I just noticed that it kind of looks like the maze from the movie Labyrinth. It does! Right? I wonder if we're gonna run into Hoggle. Remember, don't touch the fairies. No, they bite. They bite. With all seriousness, no. We are walking around the cemetery to see if we, there are any other gates that we can look through to get other different shots because we can't go in it right now. And who knows when the next time we're gonna be back here is, right? There's not much more of a view, but we get to have a little bit of a peek 
Again, the sign here that says Lafayette Cemetery number one will be temporarily closed for repairs, but we can see right down this little alleyway. There it goes. Look at you. Wait a second, wait a second. <laughs> it's got little pricklies on it. Serves you right that it hurt. Put it down before you hurt yourself. I mean, you kind of look very witchy though. Yep. Witch. Do you see any powdered sugar on me? Let's see. <laughs> no powdered sugar. That powdered sugar reference. We've been eating beignets since we've been here in New Orleans. Not every day, I mean, that's disgusting. But the beignets here are unlike anywhere else. Powdered sugar is Jessica. What did you say about powdered sugar? If you get what? If you can wear all black and eat beignets, but walk away without any powdered sugar on you, you must be a witch. Because I didn't have any. It didn't touch me at all. Maybe I just have a really big mouth. <laughs> Which is also a my truth. Onward we go. Onward. Good luck never stays a day. A bad luck's always a-comin' my way.